So welcome to my YouTube channel. That's what we call the good life today. I'm up on my allotment on this lovely sunny day. Um, and I'm gonna be taking to you for a little tour around my plot so you can see how everything's doing. Now, if you've not already subscribed to my channel, you know what I'm gonna say, if you could please do so, cause you'll get lots of helpful hints and tips all throughout the year from my allotment, my home garden, and from time to time, my home kitchen. Now, despite all the rain and the wind and the lightning we had yesterday, today is an absolutely glorious day. It's the perfect day for me to be up here um, I've got my apple my, my Bramley apple and my pear tree um, and I've taken all the pears off those at the moment and um, if you've got any left I would be getting them off now my rhubarb has well and truly flopped back with where it's um, where the temperatures have really dropped so all I'm going to be doing to that is, is pulling some of the weeds away and I might give it a little bit of light mulch but if I don't remember at this stage it really doesn't matter that much at all so as we move down, we've got my raspberries that are looking a little bit shabby. And um, so I will need to prune those. So we've got a few more months to be able to do that in, but you can be doing that this month if you want to. I'm not sure what's happened to my blackberry bush, but it's not looking very healthy. So I've literally no idea what's happened to that, but I don't think that's going to be coming back next year. Um, and I've got my cherry tree there and also another apple tree there, which all my apples are off now and stored. Um, and the few cherries that I had are in my tummy. And um, I've got my gooseberry bushes there, which as you can see, and need a little bit of a weed and a bit of a tidy up and a bit of a prune, which I will be doing over the coming months. And I've got some parsnips here, which I haven't actually started to pull yet. Um, but the leaves are looking quite good. And I have found some tops of, of the um, parsnips, which I can't find at the moment, but there might be some parsnips underground, but there really is no rush to be digging those yet anyway. Um, and my later um, carrots, the Chardonnay ones, which they're under there. And I did pull a few up the other day and they were okay, but I've still got some other carrots I'm still still eating. I've got a squash that grew really randomly. And one of them I think might have been eaten by a wild animal or maybe the frost just got it, and um, which I will be taking off this month. And also my garlic that I planted. Literally only a few weeks ago, it's already sprouting. So I'm really, really impressed with that. And um, we've got some other bits in there, a little bit of fennel left from earlier in the year and also an asparagus just a little bit of asparagus there and um, but mainly that's all just my garlic which I'm hoping is going to do a lot better because the drainage is a lot better so if you've not planted your garlic and um, they like better drainage rather than clay soil so I'm hoping that's going to it's going to prove very fruitful for me and I've got my blueberries over there which obviously are well and truly finished but the plants have got much bigger this year um, I don't know much about pruning my blueberries so I'm going to have to do a little bit of googling so if any of you have got blueberry um, bushes and you know what to do with them if you want to just drop me a comment and let me know what you do with yours that's absolutely fantastic they were so tiny when I originally got them um, and they've just grown such a lot this year and even though they were quite small produced quite a lot of blueberries actually so I'm really hoping that next year um, it's going to be even better so I put my overwintering onions in literally a few weeks ago and they're already sprouting up so I'm really really chuffed with those so if you've not put your overwintering onions in now is a really good time and also this bit looks quite untidy um, but this is my kit my courgettes my squashes and my pumpkin so although it looks a little bit messy as you can see i've got quite a lot of squashes and and pumpkins there which i will be lifting those up by the end of the month because the weather will start to turn plus the fact halloween's coming and we all seem to do a lot more things with our our pumpkins and our squashes then anyway the courgettes have all but finished but even though the plants look really dead i do seem to still have the odd little courgettes on there um, and i am definitely from the camp of i leave stuff out for as long as i can sometimes plants can look actually really quite shabby but still be producing vegetables so all the while i'm still getting vegetables off of them i still leave them in and the same with this one as well i've got a few off there if i'm really honest with you i probably should get those off in the next week or so because they will deteriorate out here because it's starting to get colder and they probably won't grow that much more um but we will see today is absolutely glorious compared to what it has been so you never know so i've got some more gooseberries here which obviously have all been harvested and long harvested so um i obviously need to tidy those up like i did the other ones which i've not got to yet and these are my cape gooseberries now my cape gooseberries um i don't know if anyone knows they're kind of a little bit tricky to grow in this country and the fact that they they ripen a bit later in the year and with the weather the way it is it can be quite difficult you're waiting for the little um 
the little pods to change colour and that gives you an indication that they're ready to harvest. So I'm actually getting quite a good bowl full off at a time. So you're waiting for them to look a little bit like that. Um, and from what I've, uh, I've gleaned, and I don't know that much about them, as soon as they've started to change colour, I've just been harvesting them off and putting them in a bowl in my conservatory and letting them finish off. It would be too early to take them off like this, apart from the fact you can feel that there isn't much of, much of a fruit in there. So they kind of go from having nothing inside them to suddenly filling out and ripening at what seems like quite a quick speed. So every week I've been coming up here and taking them off. And as you can see, my Cape Gooseberry plants have gone absolutely bonkers. So to most of them, that was quite an easy one to get. I'm finding I'm have to almost bury myself in there because a lot of them are quite deep inside. As you can see, there's loads and loads of them. So I have no idea how these are going to fare with the weather cooling down. All I can say is we did have quite a heavy frost the other day and these look just as good as they did before the frost. So clearly they are a little bit frost tolerant, but I know they are not completely frost tolerant. So at some point I'm hoping that enough will ripen up to make it worth my while planting them. So I have harvested all my cabbages now and I made some sauerkraut and kimchi, which is really, really lovely. So I'm really enjoying that at the moment. And I've got some kale underneath here, which is kind of like touching the top of here where it's getting so big, which is not ideal, but it often gets like that. I don't have a cover big enough. I do need to work on that so that it can keep growing and growing up. Um, I've left this uncovered over here. This is my broccoli. And I just wanted to show you how well it can still be growing. Now this is obviously calabrese. So typically you think you're only gonna get one head of broccoli. Um, and it looks really, really shabby from first looking at it. And you think, you know what, that's it, it's done, I'll pull it up. But if you look, I have lots and lots of small heads, like purple sprouting broccoli. So, and more here. I'm basically all in and around this plant. There are more little heads of broccoli and I will take them off and use them as purple sprouting and they will be a decent bunch when I've taken them all off. So I leave these on here until they stop producing any more or they start to get a little bit tough. And at the moment they are all still absolutely fine. So this is where we've got the wildflowers and obviously that looks a little bit shabby now, but there is still lots of good stuff going on there for all the beneficial insects. And we've got lots of nasturtiums down there, um, which if no one's ever eaten them before, nasturtiums are still very good in salads. I've got loads of my status flowers here, which I shall be harvesting some more of those. If you've never grown cut flowers before, I find statis a very, very easy one to grow because it just keeps coming and coming and coming. And sometimes they overwinter as well when you get them the following year as well. So I find them quite a lovely flower to grow. I've got my runner beans over here. Now they are almost finished, but I am still, again, you know, it's not a lot, but it's still, you know, a few meals. So I've still got beans coming off. You know, they might get a little bit tougher, but you can normally tell if it's tough when you put the knife through it to try and cut it you know if it's tough or not. So I will still be harvesting. I won't be freezing these ones. I'll take off the good ones and I will just I will just use them in my everyday cooking. Um, but I've still got a few. Unfortunately, we've had a lot of high winds on here and despite our best efforts to try and keep them upright, they don't wanna be upright. So they're gonna leave them on the ground and just take off what we can. And I will come back later and pick those off because I'll be eating the beans and the broccoli and everything else over the coming days got more squashes here so I have had a particular good view so despite the slugs and the snails eating so many of my plants I still have quite a lot of squashes in fact record numbers for me and now we move up to the artichokes these are Jerusalem artichokes so these aren't the ones where you get um, the artichokes on the plant they're like tubers they're in the ground so um, I do need to cut these off. Um, I believe you cut them off about a foot above the ground and then you can actually start harvesting them this month as well. And um, you don't have to harvest them all in one go. Um, you just have to harvest them before they start to sprout again in the spring. Um, so I generally dig a few at a time. If you've never had artichokes before, they do have a bit of a reputation. Artichokes, artichokes, so they say, but it is incredibly good for the gut bacteria. Um, I managed to kill mine off despite the fact that they are not meant to be easy to kill. Um, but fortunately, someone else gave me some more tubers for me to plant this year so I'm really lucky to be able to give that a go again. So always good to share things with other people that grow 
vegetables as well. So these are my French beans, which I've just left on so the pods can dry out so I can plant them again next year. So these are definitely not good for eating now. So I shall leave them on there and hopefully they'll dry out well enough for me to be able to plant. So it's always good to save seed where you can and, and things like French beans and runner beans are a really easy one to save. Um, just as a general rule of thumb, if you're not aware, things like squashes, courgettes, cucumbers, melons, they're not good ones because they really easily cross-pollinate and sometimes they don't taste very nice um, if they cross-pollinate um, in an in, in in inappropriate way, shall we say. Um, so I always buy fresh seeds for things like my squashes, cucumbers, courgettes, all those sorts of things. Um, but things like beans are really good for saving. I've got my um, carrots underneath here, which are doing really, really well. I've probably one of my best years for my carrots so far. I'm actually getting a really decent sized carrot and the EnviroMesh works absolutely fantastically at keeping the, car the carrot white fly off of them. So, and as we move up, I've got lots of lovely chard here, and I've also still got some beetroot. And you can leave your beetroot in the ground um, for quite a bit longer. If you leave it too long, when it gets really cold and frosty, and I mean really cold and frosty, it can ruin the beetroot. But at the moment, we're okay just to leave them in for a little bit longer. Um, I just harvest things like my beetroot as and when I need them. I'm not a great big fan of um, pickling. It's not so I don't like pickling my beetroots, but I prefer to eat my beetroots in actual dishes and things like that. Although I did put it in one of the um, kimchi recipes that I did. That was a really nice way of, of preserving it as well. So you don't just have to pickle it. You can do other things like make chutneys and relishes and things like that as well. So my polytunnel is a little bit of a mess. I do need to go in there and tidy it up. So it's probably best that we don't go in there at the moment. So even though I am a YouTuber, I, my God, and it's not perfect. I am not an expert by any chalk of the imagination. I love having my own fruit and vegetables and it's purely a passion for growing good fruit and vegetables, which is one of the reasons why I do it. Um, and here are my leeks. Now they are actually starting to fill out a little bit. And um, there was a point, they're not filling out brilliantly, so I'm really not too sure what's gonna happen to them. They weren't looking very good at all um, a few weeks ago and I weeded around them and they have definitely, definitely picked up. Whether or not they're really going to fill out, well, you'll just have to keep watching my channel to find out, won't you? Now, I do hope you've enjoyed my tour of the allotment. And if you're wondering what you can be sowing this month, because there are still lots and lots of things you can be sowing, um, please watch my video up on the screen and also in the description.